What's up, my dudes? My parents are determined to make my life harder and they have a screen time on my phone, which is the device that I am currently recording on. And I am sacrificing all of my screen time to record Podfix. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Nomad by Android Ninja. Chapter 4. Appearances may be deceiving. Summary. Quirk apprehension test is on its way and Izu, Izu is a badass. Read by Alolo. For all of society's talk of weak quirks being useless, the minor quirks Izuku had collected were his favorites. Sure, force, push, strength, and durability were mo the most useful in a fight, but mental watch and balance made his life so much easier. Always knowing what time it was was a lifesaver. Sometimes, literally. And despite all of his combat experience, he was still overly clumsy in day-to-day -day situations, making balance a blessing when he didn't want to make a fool of himself. Not to mention Apple Sumner was almost tied for his favorite quirk. Having something to eat on hand so he didn't have to talk more than necessary did wonders for his anxiety. Plus, they made a pretty good projectiles, so there was that. After Changing as quick as possible, he didn't want anyone asking about his scars, he made his way down to the field. One of the first ones there. What do you think this is about? Uraka asked, sticking to him like glue. glue. This is kind of weird. I think he's going to make us fight each other and then the loser will be sacrificed to the gods. The people around, <laughs> the people around him turned to stare. What? Thankfully, Aizawa interrupts. Now that you're all here, we can begin. He then started explaining the exercise with the twists of being able to actually use their quirks. Not what he had expected, but nothing he couldn't handle. But as usual, the universe couldn't just leave it at that. Oh, and last place is getting expelled. Of fucking course. When Izuku had first realized that Izawa was the hero who had almost caught him committing vigilantism a few weeks ago, he had seriously considered bolting. Even if the man didn't recognize him, something about the hero's quirk's light sent him on edge. So dark red, it was almost black. It was slow and methodical, methodical giving very little away. Izuku had long learned that while not a strict science, he could often get a surface reading of their personalities. Araka was light and bubbly pink color. Edis was strong and very intense navy blue. Kacha, er, uh, Bakugos, was a flashy and forceful orange. He liked having an idea of what he was dealing with, but he wasn't getting anything other than but he wasn't getting anything other than what he would have been able to observe without using his quirk. Izuku wasn't worried about getting last place if he was honest. This kind of test tailored, was tailored for people with physical quirks just like the Entrix exam. It was a disturbing trend that rubbed him the wrong way. He counted at least two people who couldn't use their quirks in almost any of these tests. With the ability to throw a ball really far didn't exactly show their potential to be a hero. So what was, what was Aizawa thinking? Midoriya, it's your turn to throw. Can I just leave? Is that like an option? <laughs> Shout a watch that the students completed their tests. Nothing those, nothing, noting those that were going to be an issue. The first was obvious. Bakugou had some serious temperamental problems and needed a huge ego check. Something that had most likely never had gotten. He was driven though, but all that rage was going to cause problems. Todoroki was also a given, talented, but considering that Endeavor was his father, that was to be expected. He was easily among the two, the top two in the class, but wasn't pushing himself. 
The lack of fire was also a concern, something that would be needed to be addressed sooner rather than later. Midoriya, it's your turn to throw now. The green-haired boy glanced at him before coming to stand in the circle, taking a bite of an apple that he'd seemingly pulled out of nowhere. There was another potential problem. While Midoriya lacked the explosive personality and the cool arrogance of Bakugo and Todoroki, something about his demeanor rubbed Shota the wrong way. With a powerful quirk like his, he should have more confidence, but the boy was borderline skittish. On his own, he might have been able to leave him be. Not everyone fell into the conventionally powerful quirk equals confident category, even if it was more common. The problem was that in the gym uniform, the sleeves went up to the elbows, and already Shota could see a multitude of scars. Scars in and of itself weren't bad. Accidents were common in this age of quirks, especially when people are young and still figuring out how to use them. But that didn't explain the knife scar, or the bullet one, or the burns. Nor did it explain the hyper-vigilance he explained. Uh, displayed. Biting his lip, the teen in question squeezed the ball tightly as he contemplated the pitch in front of him. Any day now, Shota called out. Still clasping the apple in the other hand, Midoriya went, winded up to throw the ball, only to, to, to toss it so lightly it barely went out of the circle. Oh boy. Shoto Todoroki was not sure what the green-haired boy was playing at. Even after clearly displaying some sort of air or telekinesis quirk, the teen had flunked the ball throw so badly a toddler could have gotten a better score. It was stupid, especially since the teacher didn't seem like the type to put up with any tomfoolery. Izawa narrowed his eyes. What was that? Midori's expression didn't change. I threw the ball. What? Would you mind explaining why you purposely flunked your throw? Aizawa demanded more than asked. Midori met his eyes, met his gaze dead on. I just think this whole thing is kind of stupid, he said, drawing gasps from his classmates. Like, I get the whole find creative ways to use your quirk. But this is, like, one of the worst ways to do it. What are people with non-physical quirks supposed to do? This isn't an accurate way to measure our abilities or drive. Was he challenging a teacher? One who had threatened to expel a student just for coming late to this strange test? Was he really this dumb? Aizawa's expression was unreadable. And... How exactly are you proving your point by purposely failing your throw? Is that a rhetor rhetorical question or do you actually want to know? The brown-haired girl with a bob was nervously biting her lip as she watched, clearly worrying over the fate of the other team. Shota didn't understand that either. If the boy was sent home, there was a higher chance that no one else would be and she would be safe. Are you trying to be difficult? Aizawa asked. Throw the ball already. I don't have a ball, Midoriya pointed out. It's over there. He gestured, <laughs> he gestured to the uh, aforement, uh, for, uh, I don't know, object a few feet in front of him. Was he really this stupid? Were all other kids his age this tactless? Maybe it was the best the, maybe it was for the best that its sperm donor had gotten him homeschooled if this was the average intellect. Hurry the fuck up, Deku screamed the blonde with an explosion quirk. Stop wasting everyone's time. Flinching slightly, the short boy, Deku, turned to face him. This ex this is actually the last test and I'm the last person to take it. So nobody's going after me. Don't get smart with me. The blonde lunged, and for a fraction of an instant, Shoto saw something that set alarms blazing in his head. Instead of jerking back or something, 
similar, Decker's eyes became cold, his hands shooting forward as to grab as if to grab before the two could connect, a thin white scarf wrapped around the blonde, eyes growing red. As I was scold, you're giving me dry eye, he growled. You attack another student outside of the mandated exercise and you'll be expelled, do you understand? The explosive teen mumbled something vaguely affirmative. Good, and I was lying about the expulsion. You're done for the day. The following outburst was cut off by their teacher's glare, but Shoto wasn't watching them. Midoriya had reverted back to the mostly blank but somewhat nervous state he had been in before, but Shoto hadn't. But Shoto wasn't about to forget the momentarily viciousness. In that split second, he knew that the other boy had been about to grab the blonde's throat, and while it hadn't been the aggressor. And while he hadn't been the aggressor, Shoto didn't doubt that he would have finished the fight. I'll need to watch out for him. Shoto looked at the clock. They'd been dismissed early, meaning they could go home now. When had it ever been a home? When had, had it ever been anything other than a prison? If you had told Toshi that he was going to be mugged on the way home from school, he might have believed you. If you had said that he was going to be saved by the same boy who had broken into his house, who was seemingly the embodiment of not giving a fuck, while simultaneously being the most anxious person he'd ever met, he was probably he would have probably told you to fuck off. Staring at the unconscious bo body of his would-be attacker, Hitoshi was in disbelief as Midoriya re relived uh, relived the man of his wallet before calling the police. You just took that dude's stuff, he said when he got over his initial shock. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Midoriya merely shrugged. So is lying on your school papers, but neither of us had a problem with that. Hmm, touche. Besides, it's not like we don't need it. We can't live off only apples and instant ramen. He thought she snorted. And we're going to tell me where you get those? Nope, he said, popping the pea. That's for me to know, and if you ever find out, I'd have to kill you. Midoriya said jokingly, but Hitoshi, Hitoshi wouldn't help but hear the slight undertone in his words. Don't ask about this, or about what just happened. Despite looking like he couldn't harm a fly, the second the man had pulled Hitoshi into the alley, Midoriya had grabbed the mugger by his hair and slammed his head into a wall quicker than he'd even be able to register he was under attack. Efficient and brutal, not to mention there hadn't been the slightest bit of hesitation in his moments. They'd been practiced, smooth, and even after the advent, he didn't look uneasy or remotely shaken. You know, for such a cute guy, you're pretty scary. And just like that, the con calm and control trip team tripped over his own feet and would have fallen flat on his face if Hitoshi hadn't grabbed the back of his shirt. What? Midoriya stuttered, his freckled skin tinted pink. Oh, Hitoshi leaned down, smirking. I said you're cute. His face darkened in color and Mid Midoriya looked anywhere but Hitoshi, his hand fidgeting nervously. Oh, he said in a strangled voice. Something the matter, we mean? Hitoshi asked, perf uh, purposely lowering his voice. You look a little hot. Another in unintelligible noise escaped the smaller teen as he backed away. Stop it, Shinzo, he muttered, trying to cover his face. Letting out a low laugh, Hitoshi continued walking. Whatever you say, green bean. He was definitely filing that away for further use. I hate recording them flirting. That's so awkward. I'm sorry, it sounds so forced. I'm so sorry for that. Okay, bye.